What's going on guys, it's Cynical and welcome back to another Kingdom Hearts 3 news and information video. Today for you guys, we're going to be sitting down and talking about more spicy interview stuff. There is currently interviews flying left, right and center, dude. Uh, this, this obviously makes sense considering that Kingdom Hearts 3 is only a mere few weeks away from actually releasing. And during this time, a lot of the big heads over at Square Enix as well as Tetsuya Nomura are doing a lot of media work, sitting down with the media, answering different questions. Always love these uh, because this is generally where a lot of the spicy and juicy information stems from. Today for you guys, we're going to be reading through a recent interview between Edge Magazine and Tetsu Nomura. This is actually a really interesting one as they actually talk about Pixar, the switch from the Luminos engine to the Unreal Engine 4, Big Hero 6. As well as that, I also wanted to bring up a, another interesting thing that recently happened where a magazine known as Perfect Magazine sat down with Tetsu Nomura and actually spoke upon the future of the Kingdom Hearts series. Now, I'm only going to be including the most interesting parts of these interviews, so if you do want to check out specifically the Edge interview for yourself, I'm going to leave the full one in the description down below. The first question right here is asking on the importance of adding Toy Story to that of Kingdom Hearts 3. Tetsuya Nomura said, after we were done with Kingdom Hearts 2 and were starting to consider 3, we started talks with Disney. I remember saying, if we can't use Pixar and we can't have a third game. It's that important to the game series. The whole world loves Toy Story. Everybody feels the appeal of that story and those characters. So yeah, at the very beginning I directly said to them, if we can't get this, I don't want to do it. So that's a pretty bold statement from Papa Nomura right there, essentially saying that if we cannot have the rights to use Pixar properties for the third numbered title, then we ain't doing it, son. And I absolutely love this mentality because I don't want to necessarily say that uh, getting the rights to that of being able to use Pixar properties for the Kingdom Hearts universe is necessary for the longevity of the series, but certainly acquiring the rights and being able to use the properties of Pixar for Kingdom Hearts will most certainly support the longevity of the game. And not just that, but the sheer popularity that is backing up Pixar, some of the most popular Disney properties stems from that of Disney Pixar, including the likes of stuff like Incredibles, Toy Story, Monsters Inc, etc, etc. So yeah, I think it was pretty important that Square Enix definitely did acquire these rights. Of course, Toy Story and specifically Monsters Inc, two worlds we have been wanting to get into Kingdom Hearts for an extremely long time. And I know for Toy Story, it's extremely important to to Nomura. They then went on to ask what the process was in order to actually acquire the rights to use Toy Story in Kingdom Hearts 3. This is what Tetsuya Nomura said. Nomura said, I wrote a general outline of the story and I submitted it to Pixar. It took them several years to okay the story and the character designs. Previous to Kingdom Hearts 3, I think these companies kind of saw it more as like secondary rights permissions. They saw it more as a product like you would a branded toy or something. This time it was creator to creator. It was somebody who had made this animation and somebody who was making this game. We were communicating with each other, myself and these people, so that added an extra level of complexity because each creator has their own desires, ideas and concepts. Taisu went on to say, we were talking to a Pixar story supervisor Jason Katz and what he said was he wanted us to make a Toy Story world a toy store that they couldn't. I think the most interesting thing that came out of this paragraph right here though is knowing that Tetsuya Nomura actually sent off concepts and ideas for a Toy Story world a very very long time ago it seems to be after they finished up Kingdom Hearts 2 and from what Tetsuya Nomura is saying right here it actually took Pixar several years to get back to Square Enix to actually okay the idea yeah the whole Pixar thing has been a rocky road and if you guys have seen previous uh, history videos to do with Pixar and Kingdom Hearts you guys should know that Square Enix have been trying to acquire the rights to use Pixar properties for Kingdom Hearts for an extremely long time. So Kingdom Hearts 3 isn't really just a celebration of finally getting the third numbered title, but more so it's Square Enix finally being able to dip into a side of Disney that is so important to so many people. And also it seems that Pixar actually came up 
with the idea to base the Toy Story world around specifically a toy store which is known as Galaxy Toys, which is where most of the Toy Story world takes place. We do have Andy's house, the inside area of just his room, as well as outside the house, but for the most part, most of the world takes place inside of Galaxy Toys. They then talked a little bit about Big Hero 6. Nomura said, Big Hero 6's story is a moving story that involves a robot, which is something that really fits well with the Kingdom Hearts world. Taisu went on to say, Hero is an inventor, so he wanted something that was invented. So he came up with an augmented reality device that Sora places on as a visor. And using that, we have San Francisco. But you're looking at it through a sort of AR visor. Now the reason why I wanted to include this little snippet right here was the mention towards the AR visor. Now Sora does actually have a sort of custom outfit for that of the Big Hero 6 world in Kingdom Hearts 3. It's nothing spectacular like the Halloween Town outfit or anything like that. But it is different because Sora, yes, does get equipped with this little sort of AR visor type of thing. Now I haven't really thought too much into this and I don't actually know if the visor itself actually has any sort of effect on the gameplay, whether it is the actual gameplay itself or maybe something like the heads up display. It doesn't really seem like that because when we do see gameplay footage of the Big Hero 6 world, stuff like the gameplay doesn't really seem any different. There's no clear things that are happening from Sora being equipped with the visor. And also the heads up display seems to be the exact same as well. Kind of would have been cool to include maybe something to do with the heads up display when Sora does have the visor on and who knows, maybe something might actually happen with the visor. The only thing that I have noticed in one gameplay scene for the Big Hero 6 world where the visor might actually be doing something in the gameplay itself is this scene where we actually see a triangle prompt, uh, a pair of one of the Neo shadows. You'll notice a green circle reticle over one of the other Neo shadows. This is actually a prompt for if Sora hits this specific Neo Shadow, he'll then be able to prompt an Attraction Flow ride. But it's more so the sort of square reticle that is to the right of the screen that has me interested. Uh, not too sure what this is, this could be a different ability that might not have anything to do with the visor itself. This also kind of got me thinking, this might be the way that Sora is able to actually see the bug blocks within the San Francisco world. Considering the bug blocks are only meant to reside in that of the datascape, and considering that this is an AR visor, maybe he can see these bug blocks only through that of the AR visor. The thing that tells me that this might not be the case is because the other party members are clearly fighting off the bug blocks in different scenes, and for the likes of like Goofy and Donald, they obviously don't have AR visors. Just a little thought in my mind, it would be cool if there was some sort of gameplay gimmick surrounding the visor, We'll just have to wait and see. And the final interesting point out of the Edge Magazine interview was the talk about the switch from the Unreal Engine 4 to that of the Luminous Engine. Uh, Taisu said, the thing with the Unreal Engine 4 is that it's really easy to experiment gameplay wise. We didn't need any assets to start off, so the game designers that aren't artists at all could actually start to test the game. We had a lot to learn. When we started using Unreal Engine 4, we had these study groups. Well, not study groups, but we all sort of, there's a tutorial. I even did that. I made my own robot, a robot that changed shape. We never used it in the game, we were just testing it out. We had contests too, I remember. Each game designer made something and we sort of compared it. And this had nothing to do with the game because we had to learn about the engine. That was part of the development timeline and was something that contributed to and affected the schedule. Tetsuya Nomura continued and mentioned it was a whole year that we had to kind of rewind and restart. As a development tool, Unreal Engine 4 is kind of an all-in-one. It's got all of the stuff that is needed in it. It's used around the world and we also got really great support from Epic. They were very helpful through the entire process. It would have been a different story if the team making Luminos had been members of the Kingdom Hearts team but they were a different team, so that did make things a bit more difficult. Now, Kingdom Hearts 3's development did get delayed due to this engine switch, and Tetsuya Nomura did actually talk a little bit about this earlier on in 2018, around the time of E3. But following up towards this conversation, yes, Kingdom Hearts went through a pretty rough development period, as the game was originally meant to be developed on that of the Luminos engine, Square Enix's very own in-house engine. However, the 
like Tetsuya Nomura mentions here, the Luminos team, which are actually a part of Square Enix, aren't actually part of the Kingdom Hearts team. And so there wasn't really too much control from specifically the Kingdom Hearts team with keeping Kingdom Hearts 3 on board with Luminos. There were too many things going on with the company itself. And in conclusion, the higher ups at Square Enix decided to shift Kingdom Hearts 3 from being on their own in-house engine to that of the Unreal Engine 4. Keeping in mind that if Kingdom Hearts 3 never faced a game engine change back in 2014, then it's crazy to think, but we may have already have had Kingdom Hearts 3 for an entire year. We can clearly see though these days that Kingdom Hearts 3 is highly benefiting from that of using the Unreal Engine 4, specifically the visual side of things. The particle effects, the character details, the world environments all look absolutely groundbreaking, the lighting, just everything man, it's all coming together so nicely. Both Taisu and Tetsuya Nomura made it very clear that the Unreal Engine 4 is extremely developer friendly. And with also getting assistance from Epic, the people who actually designed that game engine, the process of actually learning how it all works was fairly one easy. And the very final thing that I wanted to talk about was two paragraphs that came out of a recent interview between Perfect Magazine and Tetsuya Nomura, talking specifically about the future of Kingdom Hearts. Now, one misconception that constantly floats around is that Kingdom Hearts 3 is the very final Kingdom Hearts game. Now, yes, it is the final installment for a specific thing, but it's not the final installment for the series overall. It's the final installment for that of the Xehanort Saga. Sort of think of it as a anime season or like an anime arc coming to an end. Perfect Magazine said then that refers to something in the future in Kingdom Hearts 3, or are you referring to something of the past? Nomura said, as referred to in our previous conversation, I can't pinpoint only one storyline as I have a multitude of potential things lined up. If there's a future, then there's also a past. That's a kind of concept I tend to think about. At the moment, the smartphone game Kingdom Hearts Union Cross contains a story that happens in the past. And within the timeline that follows after that, I am able to think, oh, so I guess I should expand upon this part now and decide on what exactly to flesh out. They continued to ask, will there be more to the story that follows after the new Kingdom Hearts 3 game? Tetsuya Nomura said we've received comments such as, oh, come on, just finish the story already. However, if you play Kingdom Hearts 3, I'm sure there will be people saying, hurry up and give us the continuation now. And that's the type of story I think we have created with this game. So one thing that should be known with Tetsuya Tetsuya Nomura and was sort of explained in that very first paragraph right there is that Tetsuya Nomura is constantly thinking about what could potentially happen after that said installment that he is currently working on. So no doubt concepts and ideas for whatever the future of Kingdom Hearts holds is already in the works. The last paragraph though is interesting where Tetsuya Nomura mentions the whole hurry up and give us the continuation now, mentioning that this is the type of story that we've put into this game. Meaning that once we've experienced the story, we will be itching for that next lot of Kingdom Hearts goodness. Now the thing with Kingdom Hearts games is uh, whenever you play them, sure, there's a lot of questions that end up getting answered. But usually the way that Kingdom Hearts games work is, sure, you're getting questions answered, but you usually end up finishing a Kingdom Hearts games with more questions than questions answered. And no doubt Kingdom Hearts 3 will most likely be the same, although there are so many lingering questions as of right now that I desperately want answered and that I know will hopefully get answered in Kingdom Hearts 3, but definitely do expect uh, a few cliffhanger type of things. Because from what Tetsuya Nomura is saying right here, no doubt Kingdom Hearts 3 is gonna contain them. I'm excited though to see exactly what the future of Kingdom Hearts holds. We don't know exactly what's gonna happen with Xehanort, who exactly the next major villain could be. I have a feeling that most likely the Master of Masters will be heavily involved in the next saga, but of course, we'll just have to wait and see. But anyway guys, that is going to wrap up today's Kingdom Hearts 3 news and information. Some very spicy and interesting stuff. In the comment section down below guys, please do let me know your thoughts and opinions. With all that being said, I'm Cynical. Hopefully you guys are having a fantastic day, and until next time guys, I'll catch you later. Peace. Hit them on the page, you'll be coming through stunts. Go dead my mouth when you suckers be bluffing. Look, crank, gaming up your bitch, though. Catch me in the back, playing Super Nintendo.